teach a man to fish and you will feed him for a lifetime. Oh, right. This was this was exactly what he taught at that point. He could have given him some money. He chose not to. Right. He 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 just chose not to give him, and instead he gave him the ability to earn for himself. Okay. After 14 days, that Sahabi came back, and he he alayhi salatu wasalam asked him, um, how are you? He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It's it's amazing. Every day I have enough to feed myself and feed my family. I even have wealth that's left over. And he said to that Sahabi, you see, on that day I didn't want to give to you because Allah Almighty loves the upper hand and not the lower hand. And the upper hand is the one that gives, the lower hand is the one that receives. And so this is, I wanted you to be amongst those. Right, this is the, the, the world of the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is actually my topic title. The ahadith of the Prophet alaihi salatu wasallam were always timely. There was never anything that he said was applicable to all times. And I'm going to relate to something that uh, both uh, Sheikh Ridwan and Sheikh Hassan. Al Azhari, both of them, and this is why it's problematic actually to come after two good speakers, right? And uh, because people think, oh, you, because you're the last of them, you're expected to be better than them, and that's not the case, right? That really isn't the case. You know, sometimes uh, teach, uh, students are known because of their teachers, sometimes teachers are known because of their students. Right? This is very But the Prophet ﷺ sometimes narrated things to his Sahaba that even they couldn't understand and they couldn't appreciate. And so I'll tell you something really strange. On his deathbed, he ﷺ said, somebody go and tell Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq anhu to go and lead the press. He, he's my rightful leader after me. He didn't say this, but this is the lesson. Go and tell him to leave. Say the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, but Ya Rasulullah, he's a man with the softest of hearts. And when he stands on the sajada, he's gonna break down and cry. And people will not be able to hear the recitation over and above his crying. He shouldn't be the one to lead. Tell Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he is courageous, he is brave, he is pragmatic. He will do whatever you tell him as a duty. Tell him, don't tell my father radiallahu ta'ala anhu to lead. And he said, look, I've just told you, somebody go and tell Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq to lead the people. And again, so she uh, spoke to the other wives and said, go and tell the messenger of God, don't tell my father to lead because his heart is too soft, his crying will be too loud, people will not hear. And, uh, uh, you know what the Prophet ﷺ said? Inna kunna sawahibu yusuf. So you are the ones, you know, when they came to uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, don't tell Sayyidina Abu Bakr to leave. He said, you are the ones who get lost over Sayyidina Yusuf and his beauty. Look, just obey my instruction. You can't understand these things. Go and tell him to lead. And I'll tell you how remarkable this is. Right? You, you, historically, look at how remarkable. If there is a Sahabi who is pragmatic, who is brave, who is courageous, who deals with everything exactly as it should do, then who is it out of the Sahaba? Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab If there is a Sahabi who is incredibly brave and courageous, well above his own limits, who is it? It is Sayyidina Ali karamallahu wajha. If there is a Sahabi who, is the, the, who has the softest of all hearts, who is the most loving of all people, who is the most honored, then it is Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq who yet he is the one who is being told to leave. And what's, what's incredible is that he did. Afterwards when Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq who received the message, the messenger has asked you to leave the prayer, he turned to Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab and said, you should leave the prayer. 
And Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab who was a man of honor and man of word and he said, no, this is not my maqam. The messenger has asked you to leave the path. Right? So you go and do what is required of you. Don't, don't ask me. This isn't my job. This is your job. <laughs> Shall I tell you what's amazing? When the Prophet وسلم, passed away, who would lose their mind in love and devotion? Who would be out of control in love and devotion? Who would just enter a state of paralysis on hearing the news that the Prophet وسلم, has passed away? Who would that be? You would all say that that was going to be Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq Right? Because he is the one who was always more passionate than everybody else. He was always the one who was more emotional than everybody else. He used to cry when other Sahaba couldn't understand why he was crying. Right? And, and so... And yet, when, when the time came, and the Prophet ﷺ passed away, it was Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajha who enters into a state of paralysis hearing that the Prophet passed away. It was, and, and you wouldn't think that he was going to end up like this. If it was Sayyidina Umar ibn al Khattab who, who came out of there and was unable to accept what he had just seen. And so he walked around saying, Whosoever says that the Prophet has passed away, I will stay there. And so who was it who was suddenly in control? Well, actually the one who was always the most emotional, right? He came and he kissed the Prophet on his forehead and he said, Tibta hayyan wa tibta mayyita. Ya Rasulullah, you are the most beautiful of all people whilst alive. You are the most beautiful of them whilst you have passed away. And then when he came out, the one who, she, who was always overly emotional, when he came out, he then stood up in front of the people and having praised Allah Almighty and sent salawat on his Rasul, he said, whosoever worshipped Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he has passed away. And whosoever worships Allah Almighty, then he is alive and ever living. And then he said, do you not read the verses of the Quran that Allah Almighty says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَقْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلْ أَفَإِمْ مَا تَأُوْ قُتِلًا كَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ Muhammad is not but a messenger, and messengers before him have passed away. If a messenger passes away, or he is martyred in the path of Allah Almighty, are you going to turn on your heels? And if you turn on your heels, you bring no loss to Allah Almighty, and Allah Almighty rewards those who are grateful. And the Sahaba say, by Allah, we all had read this verse, but it, this was like the very first time we had ever heard this verse being recited in front of us. It was like we have never heard this verse before. We had read it, but it was like we had never, ever heard it. Why? This, this was the, the understanding of the Prophet wasallam. He knew that the one who was regimental, the one who was always so strict, the one who was always so firm, was suddenly going to enter a state of shock. The one who was incredibly brave and courageous, he was suddenly going to enter into a state of shock. But the one who was the softest of hearts would have the right words for that moment. Which is why he kept saying, I'm telling you, Abu Bakr is the right man for this case. Right? He was. He was the right man. Um, we should take from the words of the Prophet and apply them in our, in our lives. Uh, uh, that from uh, uh, Sayyidina uh, Imam Malik, uh, when somebody would ask him uh, a hadith, if he wasn't in a state of wudu, he just would not respond. And so he would always go back and he would perform wudu and he would perfume himself and he would come and sit on the sajjada and having sat there, he would say, now, somebody was asking me a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu now ask me and I will tell you. Right. This is the, the honor that he gave to the hadith. This is the honor with which we should listen to them 
this is the honor with which we should try to act upon them uh, and, and bring them into our lives. Sayyidina Abu Darda, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, he always, he reminded us, um, he said, when we come into gatherings like this and we're trying to learn, he used to say, man zada ilman zada takallufan. Whosoever increased in terms of his knowledge, increased in terms of his accountability. Right? The more you know, the more accountable you become to Allah Almighty. And so he used to say, Ya Uwaymir, La tus'al amma alimta, la tus'al amma fa'alta bima alimta. Oh Uwaymir, you're not going to be asked what you knew. And he would refer to himself as Uwaymir. Oh Uwaymir, you're not going to be asked about what you knew. You're going to be asked about what you did with what you knew. Right? And so you need to have this in, in, in your mind as you, as you listen to these ahadith that I'm going to narrate to you. Uh, before we come to the hadith, um, there's something that I want to read to you out, uh, out of Mishkat al-Anwar, uh, Imam Ghazali's, uh, it's the niche of light. Sayyidina Imam al-Ghazali rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi wrote, a fourth group of people climbs from ignorance and pretends to possess the rational faculty. They suppose that the highest felicity is in the expansion of honor and fame, the spread of reputation, a multiplicity of followers, the influence of a command that is obeyed. Hence you see that their only concern is eye service and cultivation of the things which observers cast their glance. One of them may go hungry uh, in his house and suffer harm so that he can spend his wealth when he goes out on clothes with which to adorn himself so that no one will look upon him with the eye of contempt. These types of people are beyond count. All of them are veiled by the sheer darkness that is in their dark souls. Right. This is really, when I read this, I thought to myself, Ya Allah, maybe he's talking about me and my people. Because we emerged out of ignorance. We emerged out of poverty. We emerged from really poor backgrounds. And we came here. And when we came here, we entered into a rat race. And, and we all said, we are the possessors of the rational faculty. We are intelligent people. We know exactly what we're doing now with our lives. And suddenly, we've got caught in a race where we're all, we, we are all rushing to become the leaders that everybody follows. We want a command that is followed. Or we're all rushing to attain uh, the, the properties that people will wow at. You know, just the, the, the Sheikh was saying earlier before me, it, we, all we want really is to have such a huge property, such a huge car, such a, a, a huge riding animal, uh, whatever it is, so that when people look upon us, they will say, wow, isn't, isn't that just amazing? And, and that emptiness of your soul suddenly begins to, to feed, right? That emptiness was because we, and, and we, we heard it from Sheikh Hassan, he said that if people lose their hearts, they're not bothered, right? How important is it that you don't lose your heart, right? Because we, we have lost the heart. I mean, that having uh, that disconnection with the vigor, that disconnection with Allah Almighty, has made our hearts really hollow and empty. And now you're trying to fill them and you pursue every avenue. And you convince yourself constantly, no, no, this is the right way, this is the right way. And then you, you get moments of pleasure and you think, yes, I'm, I'm feeling, uh, I, I feel more content now with everything that, that I have. Yet you're never really happy, never. And if you want to know the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Anas ibn Malik, Anas ibn Malik, 
أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لو أن لابن آدم واديا من ذهب أحب أن يكون له واديا Right? If one of you, if any one of you had one entire valley of gold, one entire valley of gold, he would only wish that he had two valleys. Right? If you, you know, if you're on a 20,000 salary and, and you aspire to reach 30,000 and you think to yourself, when I get to 30,000, I'm going to be a happy man, the Prophet is saying, break that deception, you won't be. Because when you get to 30, you're going to say, I want to be on 40. And when you get to 40, you're going to look at those who are on 100,000. Right? You've got to be really careful about this. If one of you had an entire valley of gold, he would wish that he had two. He said, nothing will fill his mouth except the earth. Right? Nothing. You're going to carry on in, in this uh, hope and in this aspiration, and in this work, and then eventually you're going to end up in a grave where you're, that grave is going to be filled by earth. That's it. Your mouth is going to be filled by earth. Um, he said that Allah Almighty only forgives the one who repents. Right? So ask yourself where you where you're going. Ask yourself where your life is, is taking you. Uh, if you if you want to know from the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he he gave very very stern warnings. An Harith Harith ibn Wahab al Khuzai an the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, قال ألا أخبركم بأهل الجنة? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Shall I not tell you about the people of paradise? So shall I not tell you who will go into paradise? He said, every weak, uh, unnotable, meager person is Ahlul Jannah. The one that nobody notices, the one that nobody sees, the one that nobody thinks anything of. And then, and if he, these are the people who, when they take an oath or they take a pledge, they always acquit themselves of it. They always fulfill it. And then he said, Allah أُخْبِرُكُمْ بِأَهْلِ النَّارِ كُلُّ عُطُلٍ جَوَّازٍ مُسْتَقْبِرٍ So shall I not tell you about those who will enter, enter into, the, into the hellfire? Uh, shall I not tell you what the hellfire comprises of? Every cruel person every violent person, every proud and conceited person that you see in your life. Right? And, and Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, he taught us over and over again, why do you do these things? Right? This dunya is a deception all around you. You all know that it's a deception all around you. You, are, you yourselves are engaged in belittling the one who's showing off with his wealth. Do you not? Imam al-Ghazali says, if you want to prevent yourself from showing off with your wealth, you think about every single time that somebody stood in front of you and he self-glorified. Every time he stood there and said, look at how uh, rich I am. I'm filthy rich. Look at uh, every time he stood there and said, I'm, I'm a great man, wonderful man. He said, you know what you do. Imam al-Ghazali said, you know exactly what you do. You huddle off in your corners, and you say, how foul was that, right? You know, he says I'm really great. He says I'm filthy rich. Y you all know you do that. And he says, if you know that you do that, then aren't the people doing that when you are self-glorifying? And aren't the people doing that when you are showing how much wealth you have? And why, why does it not occur to you that this is your reality? People don't like it. In Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab who says that you, what you want is to have belief in Allah Almighty. You want to have tawakkul. And he narrated from the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, he alayhi salatu wa sallam said, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ 
If only, if only you could rely on Allah Almighty as He deserves to be relied upon, just as, as His right. La ruzikum kama turza kutayr tabdu himasan wa turuhu bitana. He said that Allah Almighty will feed you as He feeds the birds. They go out empty bellied in the morning, they come back full in the evening. All you had to do was rely. All you had to do was rely on Allah Almighty. But you weren't, because we're always so occupied in everything else around us. We're always so incredibly distracted. Uh, the, the, the Prophet ﷺ uh, gave us methods of how to overcome uh, this exact issue and how to overcome uh, wanting to be seen the richest of all people, how to overcome this sense of pride which develops. And this is a, a, a real, really very, very valuable hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which, which teaches you, and this is from uh, Adab al uh, from narrated from Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mastabbara man akara ma'ahu khatimuhu wa rakiba al-himara bil aswaq wa <laughs> so he alayhi salatu was salam said uh, the person who sits down and eats with his slave the person who rides a donkey in the markets the person who ties up his sheep and, and he milks it with his own hands can never ever be accused of pride. Right? Can never be accused of pride. He will he will always be protected from the sin of pride. Right? Now think about that. Think really. This means if you want if you want a hadith to act by, just act by this hadith. Right? And so when you are driving, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you what happens. But when, when I go and I know that publicly people are going to be there. I want to go in the best of all vehicles that the Prophet وسلم, said, choose the most meager of all vehicles. Right? Because people want to be seen riding their horses. People want to be seen riding their camels. This is a sign of wealth. He said, I want you to turn up riding a donkey. Right? That, that'll break your nafs. That really will break your nafs. Because everyone's going to say, look at that poor man. Yeah, well, they've got nothing good to say about you now. You can start building yourself in the eyes of Allah Ta'ala. He said in exactly the same way, um, the, the, the one who milks, uh, ties up his sheep and milks it. Really, it's not just ties up his sheep and milks it, but he does the sinful chores. Right? There should never ever be a chore that you look at and say, that is too low for me to do. Cleaning the toilet? I wouldn't do it. Right? Why? Because it's just not, I'm, I'm a man of great maqam, I'm a man of great standing. What should I be cleaning the toilet for? No, he said, no, get down on your knees. Clean it. Do the cleaning. Do the washing. Do the chores that you need to do. Because this is what Islam is. Islam is beautiful. And uh, if it means clean, clean well. The, the, the Prophet Ali said, uh, only the, uh, is, Islam is, is cleanliness and only the clean people will enter into paradise. Right? Make it your way. Make cleanliness your, your, your lesson that, that you take. This is... There are, there are so many, so many ahadith and because every single hadith is appropriate for us, I, I don't know, do not know which hadith to narrate and which to leave. And, and in fact, I've been reading over and over so many different hadith and every single uh, hadith I read, I thought, I'll narrate this one. And then I read the next and I thought, I'm just very quickly just going to finish. I'll leave you last two hadith. The Prophet said, Every deen has an innate quality of character. The innate quality of, of Islam 
is modesty. And lastly, the Prophet is just to show you how jawami he was, how concise and how perfect his speech was. He said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يؤمن هواه تبعا لما جئت به. Not one of you is a complete believer until his aspirations, until his hopes, until his desires conform to that which I have brought.